Hey, it's Monday night, Monday afternoon, Monday evening, depending on what part of the world or you're Tuesday in. Or Tuesday afternoon. Or it could be. You could be having lunch in Australia for right. all we know. But it's VoiceOver Body Shop tonight. We have a great guest like we do every week. The lovely and talented Kay Bess will be right with us. Right here in the studio. We're in our studio. Woo-hoo. She, She, you know got on her dog sled, came through the, <laughs> the snow, and came all the way here from Pasadena and uh, and is joining us here. And we've got a couple of great tech questions. Oh, yes, we do. We're going to troubleshoot Chris Fries's current technical issue Ooh. live on the show. Oh, boy. With <laughs> Chris, we'll find out. He doesn't even know. All right. Coming right up on VoiceOver Body Shop. Two men, twin sons from different mothers, with a passion for voiceover recording technology, and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together, in one place, George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, the home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, finally, to bring you all the latest technology, the superstars of voiceover today, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Ant's Land Productions, where you can get a killer demo. Source Elements, who bring you Source Connect, Source Connect Live, and Source Connect Now. VoiceOver Extra, your one-stop site for voiceover resources. Vizzy Demos, your audio demo never looked so good. VO2GoGo.com, announcing Camera Ready You. VoiceOverView.com, your voiceover business made simple. And the VO Dojo, take your voiceover career all the way. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. woo All right. Welcome to another Monday night. And, uh, well, find a little cooler here in Southern California. Yeah, into the 90s. Yeah. How pleasant. Exactly. But uh, it's been kind of a scorcher. But it's nice and cool here in our studio. And yes, we have a really is. cool guest. Kay Bess is with us tonight. We're going to talk about all the cool stuff that she does. Mm-hmm. And how you can learn how she does what she does. But can you get as good as she is? That's the question. That, that's the question. All righty. Good luck. All right. And uh, we've got a couple of tech questions. Apparently, Chris Fry has some issue that he needs to deal with. <laughs> buzzing somewhere uh-huh. or humming. All yes, right. buzzing. And, uh, and then we'll talk with Kay, and we'll just have a great time tonight. So if you have a question for us... Throw it in the chat room. And also, if you're watching the show on Facebook Live, you can also go over to our website, which is vobs.tv, and from there you can join the actual chat room. We have two chat rooms going. There's the Facebook chat, and yes. then we've got the, the yes. chat room that we've been using for you know the last six years. Choose, so. choose your chat of choice. The, the one that's the vibrant one is over at vobs.tv. Right. And, uh, and of course you can, you can see the show there as well. So, uh, and, but then you can see the chat in real time, sort of with give or take 30 seconds. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so that's also a good idea, but if you have a question for us or for K Bess, all you got to do is go in the chat room and type it up. And I believe Jack Daniel will be monitoring our chat rooms tonight. Jack's there da, da, actually da. bringing the Stella Artois. Wow. Which is why the only reason we let him in here. Uh, and uh, he'll relay those questions to us. And then we can ask them of ourselves, or of Kay, or we hit Google. We're not exactly sure. Now it's time for... And now, the voiceover extra, VOBS News. The latest and most comprehensive voiceover industry news. Brought to you live.
All righty, dare to step away from the mic. Like it is with tonight's multi-talented guest, Kay Bess, voice talents surge with energy and creativity. And every now and then, that creativity wants to bubble beyond the booth. So let it. A side trip on a different or parallel direction to your voiceover career can be healthy for your mind and might even expand your voiceover business. In a new article on VoiceOver Extra, Lauren Miller, a college senior at the University of Georgia and this summer a public relations intern, shares how stepping out of the booth helped three voice talents. Look for the article titled, Dare to Step Away from the Mic, for details and links to videos. And for now, let's see where their creativity took these three. Let's start with Bob Hurley. I know Bob, who's also become known as award-winning Kitchen Bob. What's that all about? <laughs> a few years ago, Bob's wife passed away, Sad. and Bob was faced with having to cook meals for himself. Not an impossible feat, but not the easiest for some people either. So Bob's creativity took on the challenge using his voiceover and production skills. With friend Tina Babarovic, he created the Kitchen Bob video series, quickly and, and in, with quirky and informative vignettes to help other men who need help in the kitchen. And the series became so popular and good that an episode titled Korean Delights won a bronze telly award last year, That's among awesome. others. Wow. Now, Bob says the awards are a personal validation that the videos are worth doing. That's right. Next, we go back a number of years with V.O. Roll Gorman to the days when many of us had to yet to create a voiceover website. Yet Roll was already enhancing his with subpages of different character voices and production styles. It was an effort that won him a Carolina Silver Reel Award. All right, Roll. And third, many of you will remember last year's VOBS guest, Kelly Buttrick, and how she gave the Jeep marketing people a spin with a series of more than 35 videos promoting herself as a potential VO for Jeep. And the end result? Kelly ended the campaign earlier this year, still hopeful of VO jobs with Jeep, but also with four Tele Awards for the campaign and huge exposure to the ad and marketing professionals who judge the Tellies. Wow, she did a great job with that. So, if you've got ideas that will take you beyond the mic, go for it. They could eventually lead to more voiceover work and, at your very least, satisfying your creative impulses. Mm -hmm. Check this out at voiceoverextra.com, your daily resource for voiceover success. Hey, that's something you and I do. We make videos. We do. Like, we do it every Monday night. We do, and it's not like we're doing it to land gigs hosting shows. We're doing it because yeah. it bolsters our energy, our exposure, our energy level, and just our, you know, it just, and it's a, just, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Well, if it wasn't fun, why would we do <laughs> no, it? We would not be doing it. Absolutely. Um, What's going on in the tech world? Well, I was looking around for something interesting. This one's definitely outside the norm for us, but I looked over at one of my favorite websites, ProToolsExpert.com, and found an article by Russ Hughes, and it's called How Bullshit Took Over the Recording Industry and Why Critical Thinking Matters. Go check it out. This is a long article. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I checked out a couple <laughs> excerpts and there's a section in here, and it's, it's the part about why critical thinking matters. And here's what he has to say. I want to suggest that there has never been a more important time for our industry to encourage critical thinking. However, let us first define what we mean by the term critical thinking. An official definition of critical thinking is the practice of asking questions to discover answers about a subject. It can and often involves discourse about an issue with people who have a common interest in advancing the topic. The problem is, does this sound familiar yet? Yeah, uh, yeah. constantly. I mean. The problem is that our current in our that our current forum, and he's talking about their forum specifically, the but this and, yeah. this applies to all forums in our world. The blog social media culture has cultivated many more cynics and fewer skeptics. In doing so, many have made the task of encouraging critical thinking a great deal harder. You know, so a cynic is motivated by a desire to bring negative points a view to debates, and often the debate is the last thing on their mind. They have little interest in getting to the truth or discussing reasonably. They just want to do all they can to express their negative point of view. It's all cheerleading, I know. essentially. <laughs> and discredit anything or anyone who doesn't happen to agree with them and their particularly, particular worldview. On the other hand, a skeptic, this is the healthier thing, a skeptic okay. 
healthy skepticism brings a healthy sense of questioning rather than make statements who will often see them asking questions and encouraging debate. They use words like how, who, what, where, when, why, and how again, all leading questions with the desire to find out more. In my opinion, those who ask questions, and this is holds true for me as well, those who ask questions are far more interesting than those who make statements. Who on the whole, who on the whole are boring and about as useful to a conversation as the automated announcements in a train station or an airport. So, exactly. So the final word from the article is wisdom isn't knowing all the answers. It's knowing you don't have all the answers. Was that Plato that said that? I'm trying to remember what Plato, Socrates. Said. Yeah, but it's, you know. it is so true. And I, gosh, when I see people chiming in on Facebook groups about this microphone, that microphone, this interface, or you have this booth, so that microphone's not going to work. You know, people are, are so quick to jump in there and get, they just want to be heard and they're so, they just want to get into the fray and spew their knowledge bomb on, on the rest of us. Heathens. Because they can. <laughs> because they can. <laughs> and I just go in there and I say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. We didn't ask a lot of important questions here. You know, we need to know this and this and this before we can start assuming all these other things, you know? So, yeah. Um, I, I just thought it was cogent because we're always talking about the whole, you know, getting tech support by committee. Committee, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and just, just be careful because that's the kind of things you're going to run into. You right. Know? Very opinionated people. Yeah. Don't group source your home studio. Yeah. You I think be that's the way you usually that. put it. Yeah. All righty. Kay Bess is our guest tonight. We'll be talking to her in just a couple of minutes, but we have tech questions. That's why we're here, kids. All righty. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. What do your target clients see when they listen to your audio-only voice demo? Your clients are creating visual content. They live in a visual world. They think visually. To make a strong impression, your voice demo needs to meet them where they live. Now, your voice demo can make a strong visual impression when it's a busy visual voice demo. A busy demo takes your audio-only voice demo and adds a visual component, making it instantly more memorable to your prospective clients. The audio track of a busy demo demonstrates your voice work like only your voice demo can, while the video track tells your story, reinforces your brand, and delivers the call to action that an audio-only voice demo simply cannot. You went to all the trouble to have your voice demo showcase your work. Now, go all the way and showcase your brand, too. Book your busy visual voice demo at busydemos.com. Do your thing. All right. Always wanted to give voiceover a go, but don't know where to jump in. Well, this is not the right copy. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> like a boxer going into full training for a bout in Vegas. The dojo is a full-hearted, no, pull-no-punches complete training program designed to guide, support, connect, and accelerate you every step of the way from, I don't know, to working pro. Uh, making sure that you're aligned with the power and possibilities of your voice on the most streamlined and focused path to having everything you need to have the sustained, successful voiceover career you know you should have. Well, wherever you are in your voice journey, take your voiceover career all the way. And on Wednesdays, they have a monthly Ask the Sensei webinar. Uh, the first Wednesday of every month at 10 a.m. Pacific time. So what's stopping you? What do you need to do next? What do you need to help with? What do you don't know? What and You don't know what you don't know. That's you, true. Absolutely. Uh, so... Uh, our team of Sensai master teachers who are working pros who know the business inside and out because they have been in the trenches, just like you, uh, are assembled to give you answers, new ways of thinking through, and the insight and inspiration to get you to what is next. It's always just you, but never do it alone. Sign up now at the VODojo.com. That's www.thevodojo.com. We look hearing forward to hearing your voice. Voice over Body Shop, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, on VOBS.us. This is John Bailey, the Epic Voice, and you're watching VOBS.tv, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Newfoundland. They all ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> 
And we're back. I think we need to... <laughs> that bumper just keeps ending up in the show. I don't know how. Get the bulk eraser. And... John's mm-hmm. here in town now. Now we have to make him live up to that one. That's true. Re- re- re-record it. I know. And he's got a beautiful <laughs> studio he's working on. So, anyhow... Uh, this is our favorite part of the show, aside from the fabulous guests we have, and that is taking your tech questions on VoiceOver Studio Tech. Mm-hmm. And you guys come up with all sorts of stuff. Uh, first one here is this, I was always a Pro Tools guy being an engineer in Nashville, but I am loving Adobe Audition and the noise removal plugins and Auto Heal. I'm running Windows 7 uh, on a PC. Are there hotkeys or shortcut keys built in, or do I need to set these myself, and how difficult is that? Well, in Adobe Audition... It's very, very simple. You just it go is. into, uh, I have to look at it, but there's a up in edit. It's in the edit menu. In there's the edit menu, you go down and it says keystrokes. Or, yeah, keyboard shortcuts. I short, shortcuts. Yeah. And you go in there and you can assign any key you want to any function that is in Adobe Audition. For example, I auto heal, I just have an A. Mm-hmm. For silence, I have an S. Yeah, it doesn't have to be control or command or anything. It can just be a single Keystroke. letter on the keyboard that, yeah. you, that you want yeah. to use. Yeah, Adobe Audition is fabulous for that. Uh, yeah. Of course, in Pro Tools, you get that keyboard overlay. It's like this whole control panel for it. Yeah, is... I mean, they have they have keyboard shortcuts in Pro Tools, but they're fixed. You can't can customize them directly in Pro Tools. So what you can do is in Audition reprogram the if you're if you knew all the ones from Pro Tools and they're like in your fingertips, they're in your memory, like muscle memory, you can reprogram the Audition keystrokes to match the way they work on Pro Tools, which it can be really, really helpful. It means that if anybody else uses your system, they're out of luck. Right. But it's your system. You do whatever you want. It's up to you. Um, another thing that blows Pro Tools away, as far as I'm concerned, is the favorites function in Audition. So not only can you make one function be a keyboard shortcut, you can make a series of functions. Like, uh, like a stack. A yeah, it's like almost like a stack where you can have it normalize, then do this, then do this, then trim off this. And with you can have one keystroke. with one keystroke, it'll do a whole bunch of stuff. And you can't do that in Pro Tools. It just blows it away in terms of speed of productivity. You know, I know people that are really awesome on Pro Tools and editing. They fly on the thing. And if you throw them on anything else, they, they're, they don't move as quickly. But that's just because they haven't learned it yet. You right. know, I think if they were to adopt to using tools like Audition, they'd get fast pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. And that question is from Richard Harris. Thanks, Richard. Who I was amazed was still alive. Fantastic. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to build... He also asks, I'm going to build a baffled ventilation system for my new booth that I'm building. How oh, much the- noise should I expect to allow into the booth? It's part two. Zero. I'm going to build a baffle. Uh, how much noise should I expect it to allow into the booth? Yeah. It well, just depends on how you build it. Yeah, really. I mean, you know, uh, there's lots of ways to do it. I mean, there was my famous example of taking an HP printer box yeah. and putting like ceiling tile in it and then lining it with Oralex worked fabulous. Well, that worked well because it was in your attic. Yes. So you had the ceiling between that and, and the room. Right. If you were to put that thing just in your booth or like in the room, You'd still hear the fan from that thing running away. But inside it was the your... exhaust, right? So the, and the I didn't. It wasn't an airtight room, so it right. just was able to go through. Yeah. So I mean, it depends on how you build it. There are numerous examples online on how to build a, a baffling system. I'm in the middle of drawing a couple of them right now for people. It's basically a big muffler. It's a big wooden box with a bunch of fins inside. Everything's coated in acoustic foam, so the air that travels through is slowed down. And any sound that sneaks in through one end is attenuated dramatically by the time it makes it out the, the other end. So should be very, very little sound coming in through that at all. Already. More likely it'll come through your door than it will come through Yes, there. absolutely. Uh, next question. Hi, guys. First, love your show, and thanks for doing it. Well, thank you. Um, I'm a voice artist studying with Terry Daniels. Hi, Terry. My friend and I are working on a podcast audio drama and want to monitor each other in real-time audio and video. He lives in Seattle, and I'm in Sacramento. How can we do this reliably, and will it cost a fortune? Uh, thanks for any input you can give. So real-time communicate. If you're in different places, just do it on Zoom or Skype and record each of yourselves at your own end and then just combine them. Yeah, you do what's called a double system record. So you're each recording on each end. And that, that way you want to capture the highest quality audio, that, it's probably going to be the easy, easiest way to do it. Right. You know, and just line up the two audio files in your, your DAW and your digital workstation 
and you know start off the show with uh, start off the interview with a a slate literally right. a clapper going like that and make Take a one. clap so you have a spike in the audio so you can line up the two files and then once they're lined up save it lock it down and then you can start chopping it up the way that you want right. to we've done a bunch of podcasts where that's what they did you know, mm-hmm. they record we recorded on our end they recorded on our end and right. their end and we said here here's the file and yeah off it went yeah zoom or skype any of these things because you're not you're, the video isn't the thing here right this is you're producing a podcast so you don't care if the audio or the video quality i'm sorry is really of high quality but you know when you talk <laughs> about real time any of these things are going to have some latency that they're not going to be like you know absolutely real time there'll be a little delay but it should be less than a second it should be enough that with some practice you can learn how to react to each other in real time and make it feel like you're in the same room together yeah you know so yeah li- not hard to do no i mean listen to all those interviews that you hear on like uh this american not this american life i'm thinking more of like um terry gross fresh air, oh, fresh air yeah. and a lot of the times she's in the studio in philly and the the guest is here in la or in Maui, or wherever they are, and they're on ISDN. Right, and you know they, some of them are very used to that, and they make it sound seamless. You'd never yeah. know they're in two different places. But Absolutely, just take some practice. Yeah, that's not hard to do. Okay, our good friend, uh, voice Chris actor extraordinaire Fries. and former prison guard Chris Fries, <laughs> got a new got new Yamaha studio monitors MSP five. I think that's what they are. Okay, yeah, all right, and they're buzzing. They are buzzing. So. George is now teching, checking his texts to did see if we can troubleshoot did get, this. Did you get? A, did you send me a new text about? It? We've been texting back and forth about it all afternoon. I asked him if we could talk about it on the show. Actually, I didn't even ask him. I just I'm going to talk about it on the show. <laughs> Tough, and Chris. His reaction was ha ha ha. Yeah. So I guess a good thing. I, it's a good laugh. But the the buzz. I don't know if it'll read over the uh, monitors here, but it sounds something like, and it's buffering, buffering. Buffering, 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 buffering. I thought I had good signal. There we go. That's pretty bad. That's yeah. pretty awful. But that's but that's it's not just a regular. That's not your run of the no, mill ground some, home. Or that's something. something digital. Yes. That's something coming from his iPhone, or some sort of interference, loose cable perhaps. It's possible. I I he it's not a ground loop. So the whole picture here is he had some other monitors made by Focal before, but they were kind of prosumery pro- consumer monitors. They didn't have balanced inputs. All they had on them were the little RCA style jacks like right. you have on a CD player or a record player. And with that, not a single buzz, no weird nose, no, nothing, no hum, nothing. So with the new monitors, we went with proper balanced cables. There's what's it called TRS quarter inch cables going from his monitor controller. It's a Presonus monitor station Mm -hmm. to the speakers everything's done what you would think would be the right way but that's what he's getting as a result so it's interesting that now we're using grounded connections now he's getting the interference you would think the reverse would be the case but it does it's if he's if it's if it's coming if he's using a a separate unit to drive the monitors doesn't doesn't his apollo twin uh drive also drive monitors it does it does Someday, Chris, next time I'm there, we might be able to simplify the studio and remove the personas. The reason he has it is he wanted to have an easy talkback solution. Ah. And that thing has a push-to-talk button right on it. It feeds back to the board, and it, 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 it's something he does use from time to time. I'm so, betting that's what it is. Well, mm. yeah, it's somewhere in that signal chain. So there is something feeding audio. The weirdness of the sound, the way it was rhythmic and clicking, that sounds like it's originating from the Mac. Or from some computer. Right. Um, that's where it sounds like it's coming from. And, and Chris, I happen to know that, that your unit has three inputs that can be disabled and enabled. There's little push buttons. And un- disable and re-enable each of those inputs on the monitor station until the buzz goes away. So we can isolate which device is the source of the noise. I, I think it's the Mac headphone jack that's causing it. I'm trying Could to be. remember. Could I don't be. have every studio memorized. But I think there's a headphone jack cable running from the Mac into the personas and that could be the the culprit in this case i think yeah start there try to you try to memorize 150 studios try 1500 all right (laughs) i'm I'm almost there i'm catching up to you 
Anyway. It's, but yeah, I, I go to Chris's every three months. So yeah. it's his a little bit easier to remember. Yeah. And, and usually when we go over to somebody's place, it's like ripping out all the cables and like, why are you using this? Why are That's you using that? That's my favorite thing to do. Is <laughs> Rip out, out cables. Anyway. Uh, and then leaving. Yes. And then going, ha ha ha, good luck. <laughs> No. We love our job. <laughs> anyway, if, uh, if if you've got a technical issue, of course, you can write to us here at theguys at vobs.tv. To answer it here on the show. To answer right here on the show. Uh, but both of us are also available uh, through our various companies for coming out to your house or getting out with you on Zoom and helping you with any particular problems or helping you design and build your system. If they want to talk to you... They go to Edge Studio Tech... Uh, ag- there's two ways, but the fastest way is edgestudiotechnology.com. That takes you right to me. There's a button at the top that says Get George. Just click that. All right. And if you need to talk to me, go to homevoiceoverstudio.com and click on either the contact button or drop a sample of your audio in the specimen collection, which will go directly to me. All righty. K-Bess is waiting patiently to talk to us here, our our fabulous voiceover body shop set, and we will be uh, talking to her in just a minute. So don't go away. More fun to come. You confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success in one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. Drop off a specimen of your dry audio for a free analysis. Hey, everybody. I'm here to tell you about our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and many other amazing products like Source Nexus, Source Live, and now VISDN or VISDN. The ability to connect your old school hard hardware ISDN codecs made by MusicCam and Telos, whatever, directly to the internet and actually have real SPIDs that anybody can dial and you dial out through. It's amazing technology. And if you're a voice actor who's being crippled or feels your career is in danger because you're not actually able to use actual ISDN equipment in your studio, this could be something for you. Those of you who are not in areas where ISDN is available or the middle of the country or even the coast now where ISDN services have gotten absorbently expensive, this could be an alternative for you that makes sense. To get information about it, I recommend that you send an email in because it's so new. They're collecting names to see how much interest there is to build out the system. And But it is a real thing. It's real, really works, and it requires software and hardware to do it. The best way to find out more would be to send an email to support at source-elements.com and tell them you're looking for VISDN so they can get you set up and get you the information you need. And just check out Source Elements for any other products, source-elements.com. Sign up for a 15-day free trial of Source Connect anytime. Give it a shot. You don't even have to have a USB key. We'll be right back here with Dan and Kay sitting right over there. All right, it's uh, VOBS.TV. Yeah, it is. All righty. Just let me know when you're ready. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. Three. <laughs> you're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy. What they... All righty. Well, it's time to introduce our guest. You know, we need a band. Somebody could do a musical intro for our guest. Anyway, uh, Kay Bass is our guest tonight, and her kind of interests are varied. Uh, Kay's primary focus, focus has been voiceover. She's been heard on hundreds of TV and radio commercials, including 
Motel 6, Intuit, Hidden Valley Ranch, Kaiser Permanente, Apple Computers, Jurgens, Toyota, Hyundai. Did I say Hyundai right? Uh, Hyundai. 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 Yes. Hyundai. That's, why I, how to say it. that's why I didn't buy one. <laughs> Big O Tires, Oster Small Appliances, Curves Fitness, Sears Optical, and Southern California Edison. She's done promos for CNN, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, Comedy Central, the Disney Channel, and CTV News in Canada. Eh? She has narrated documentaries airing on HGTV, the Discovery Channel, WE Women's Entertainment, the Learning Channel, and can be still heard on one of my favorite programs the, on the, as the voice of the Property Brothers TV. She's been doing that for four seasons. Wow. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Kay Bess. You've been waiting here so patiently. It's been fabulous, though, to listen in. Okay. Well, it's, it's fun to do what we do, but it's more <laughs> fun having the great guests that we do. So... Sounds like you're successful. You know, you're making a living. I'm making a living. <laughs> I've had a career. That's good. Yeah. How did you get started in doing voiceover? Um, wow. Let's see. I, I came to Los Angeles 30 years, some years ago mm -hmm. to go to school in the Bachelor of Fine Arts program in acting at USC. Okay. I left in the middle of my junior year, um, which is a long and com complicated story. We don't story. need to cover that. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I lost my mind is the, is the short version, right? College um, can do that, yeah. especially hand college. Yeah, exactly, and... exactly. And somewhere in there, probably within the next six months, I was looking through Drama Log magazine, and I found a class, a one-day workshop for voiceover, which back in the day, that no, there were no workshop, no classes. People didn't teach. It was, I mean, now we have so many resources. But then it was quite unusual. So I took it. There was a casting director there by the name of Donna Ross, and uh, she recorded us on Reel to Reel. She took that home. She called me the following Monday and said, I think you'd be good at this, and she pointed me to a class, Tracks West, uh, where Tom Pinto was the owner at the time, yeah. and I took a class from him. He said, you should make a demo. I made a demo with Tom. I submitted it to three agents, and uh, William Morris called. And, uh, Gee. I know, right? It was crazy. <laughs> And I didn't know anything. I mean, I didn't know. I mean, I'd heard of William Morris, but I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing. It's just like, okay, I'll send it to those guys. Um, so Nina Niesenholz was the head of the department at the time, and she signed me. And maybe a month later, I, got, I had my first radio job, and I, I have, have been working ever since. I mean, it's, you know, ups and downs. Well, yeah. It's the nature of the beast, but that's how it worked. It's a little bit storybook in that regard. It really... You know, one door open, the next, the next, the next, yeah. I was working. and what, what do you think was your big break? What was it? I mean, aside from landing an agent, what was it that got everybody interested in putting you as one of the, the prime people that they would go to for certain things? You know, I think I came along at a time when um, a more laid back kind of natural read was just coming into vogue. I think that I think people were coming out of a more... Uh, a more sort of formal sounding oh, yeah. or more Procter and Gamble, if you right. will. You I, I was trained by the last great generation of, you know, of radio announcers. Yeah. Hard to get out of that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah it is. Stop it's it. Hard. Stop it. Yeah, so I just it. was very natural, right? I, I didn't, I didn't study voiceover at all, uh, except for that one little, one little class. Um, and so I think I came along at a time, um, when the sound of my voice, the laid back nature of my delivery was just starting to come into vogue and it, it worked. I don't think it's left. I don't think no, it hasn't got it hasn't trust left. Me. So and there are, you know, there are variations in that theme, right? But right. it's never left. So I think that was a right place, right time yeah. kind of a thing. So you you've done a lot of you're listing some of the things you've done here. Yeah. I mean that's that's a lot of those are a lot of great clients. It yes. certainly does look good on one's website. Right? Yeah. I mean, it covers a long span of time. Right. You know? right, right. And there's a, and, you know, and there's a lot more work than that, too. Um, I, I would imagine. But, but still, yeah. I mean, I've had some great, great jobs. Great jobs. Yeah. And, and it pays well, and yeah. it's fun because you get to work with great, talented people. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you, you, you fortunately had the fortune to be here in Los Angeles yes. when all this was going on. And, yes. And at a time when... If you were doing voiceover, you went into other people's studios. Oh, yes. And you weren't recording at home. No, at all. no, no, no. So, no. When things started to make that transition from 
the big studios to everybody being able to audition, yes. say about 2004, 2005. Yes. How did that affect your career and oh. what did you do to change? Oh, it did. It absolutely did. I think you, uh, I think you always have to do your best to keep up with trends and, um, and be really vigilant about it. I know a lot of people um, who grew up in voiceover at the same time I did and they don't work anymore because they decided that they didn't want to go from reel to reel to cassette. Right. Or they didn't want to go from cassette to CD, or they didn't want to. <laughs> they didn't want to get a website, right? right? Or, right. The, or you know, they they didn't want to make an MP3 available, you know, anywhere, right? Um, and they don't work anymore. So oops. I think, <laughs> yeah, oops. So, um, so I I stayed with it. I mean, I just kept. I I was a I was an asker of questions, right? What's happening next? What are people doing? I think I'll do that too. So I for sure did that, but it did. Um, the, the nature of voiceover, um, copy being available to everybody across the country, um, and everybody being able to have a, a very good studio in their home at, anywhere in the country totally changed the landscape. And, um, I, I started to diversify, you know, um, and I would say the best example of that would be that probably three years ago, I decided I wanted to try my hand at animation and gaming, mm -hmm. the, the two areas that I really hadn't focused on at all. Um, it's the biggest growth area in the yeah. business. I mean, it's, oh it's outpacing goodness. the movie industry here Absolutely. in California. Absolutely. Gaming, for yeah. sure. It's monstrous. Absolutely. So, um, so as, a good, uh, as a good client of my agency... I am always asking for feedback. Uh, am I competitive? You know, is this good? Well, how can I improve? And I got some really good feedback from both my agents and some casting directors, um, which led me to think, you know, it's been a long time since I've taken an acting class um, and that those are the skills that are necessary. And so I went back to acting school and I, I um, auditioned for and signed up for a two-year acting program in Meisner Technique out at the Ruskin Theater. And probably three months into that, started booking video games. That was, that was probably two and a half, three, three years ago. Yeah. And I've booked, I, I want to say maybe 10. Wow. Um, and so that, I feel like, is just a prime example of how important it is to keep setting your sights on different goals um, and diversifying, you know. Um, yeah. Constantly learning, yeah. doing something new. Yeah. So, what do you think was allowed you to really break into the video game stuff? I mean, what do you, was what is what is your competitive point of difference? Is the marketing like to say? Oh, I think I cultivated my acting skills, yeah. and I, I do. I think that's what makes the difference. Yeah. I, I think uh, I have been so accustomed to as a promo uh, announcer and a commercial actor. I I have. Uh, you know, really the focus is often on the sound of your voice or the sound of a particular read. And in fact, the relationship of your voice to the microphone even, right? right. And with video games, you let the engineer do that, you know, I mean, which you do anyway. Right. But You're, you're, <laughs> you're communicating you. with the guy playing the game. Exactly, yeah. Right. So, um, so learning to be engaged as the character using your imagination to imagine the characters that you're interacting with because you're not, you're alone in a studio for four hours recording. Um, but acting skills, absolutely, 100% yeah. acting skills. Yeah. And being able to take direction. And, absolutely. Because there are some great video game actors. You know, there are. Here. We've had on, uh, Andrea Tor Torres. Torres, yes, she absolutely. Was, she was fabulous. Amanda and, Wyatt is another one yeah. who you should have on. She's yeah. Yeah, she's let's book her. Yeah. Writing it down. Yeah, that's, she's that's, great. Write that down. So, um, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and and so you said you've done about ten video games. Yeah. I mean, everybody wants to get into video games. Yeah. But it's hard work. Yeah. I mean, the sessions are hard. Uh, they are. You know, yeah. Especially grunting, screaming, dying, yes. that yes. sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, but the, it's yeah. great How characters. How many ways can you die? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you actually play any of the games? I haven't. <laughs> Shh, My daughter anybody. has, though. <laughs> yeah. My, I'm too busy cooking dinner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Otherwise. a good excuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, thanks. That, that, that works. You know, because the things I always ask, you know, when you see these, it's like, you've got to be a gamer to be yeah. able to understand this. And I don't buy that anymore. Especially no, I don't think that's true. The first 
first role that I booked was for um, Lara Croft, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and mm -hmm. I booked her nemesis, Anna. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even in the game. I'm not in the game itself. I'm in all the cutscenes. Right. So I don't. My character has nothing to do with what is in the playing of the game. Right. But it carries the story along. It's a, you know she's a prominent character. So it's like, well, do I really have to know how to play the game in order to uh, to play that role? No. I just have nope. to know how to be sneaky. Yeah. That's what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. You, yeah. You have to do what we all do every day, and that's audition. Yes. How do you approach an audition? I mean, you, you get the script, and what's the process? Well, it depends upon the copy. Of course. Right? Right. Um, there are some pieces of copy. This is really bad. I shouldn't even be telling you this, but I... I um, <laughs> no, there's, it's no, okay. Please. Everything is legit. <laughs> show. So it's, it's, she says, not as she does. Right, yes, exactly. exactly. Um, there's some pieces of copy that I have done so many, uh, you know, that I... I don't think about them. I just, I see it's a, piece, it's a tag for, you know, NBC News, and, right. I, and I read it. And I don't really prepare. I don't, I get a cup of coffee. That's pretty much what I need in the morning to be able to audition. Right. Um, but when it comes to animation and gaming, those, because I'm really so new to it, I really, uh, I really delve into those. And I, I try to, um, you know, with video games, you don't get a lot of information. Um, you don't, you don't know the name of the game. You, the the name of the character that you're given isn't the real name of the character, um, and the lines are out of context. Right. Do you get and, an image of who the character you're playing yes, is? Yes. You you often you get, like get like an image. Yes. Rent relief or whatever. Yes. Yes. You often do. Yeah. Um, but you got you kind of have to be willing to just make choices of your own and uh, make them strong. And so I try to create the scenario in my head. Um, if, if there are a bunch of call out lines, like I'm in battle, um, you know, that's, that's the scenario I imagine for myself. Um, I had an example a couple weeks ago where I booked a game and I went in and she played me audition and I said, is that, is that what you're after? Like what I did. And she said, actually, no, that's not, we are going to go a different direction. And I said, oh, that's interesting that you picked me, you know, right. but we're going in a different direction. And she said, um, she said, I picked you because you made strong choices. So mm -hmm. we can never second guess what the circumstance is in the game that we're playing. Right. right. So pick one, pick a circumstance and just do it. Just go there. So um, that was a huge lesson to me. I, oh, good. I, I, it really is true that a strong choice is better than, well, I'm not really quite sure if I, so you sort of half-ass this or half-ass that. It's right. like, no, just fully just commit. Make, fully right. commit, make a choice. Right. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And, and, and not have any fear. Right. And that's, yeah. and that's a tough one. I think a it lot is. of people have a problem. You know, it's like, I don't want to make a mistake as opposed to just do it. You yeah. know, I mean, just, you've got the, you've got the copy there. Go, eh, just, yeah, exactly. You know, I, you know, I know people that are like, you know, ah, just throw it away and they book it. Like, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I think when I started, it, you know, my intention was to be an on-camera actor, an on-stage actor. And I was always very anxious and nervous and like, oh, just d uncomfortable in my own skin. And when I started doing vo voiceover, I thought, wow. This is, I think this is where I belong because it felt so natural to me and I wasn't anxious about the choices I made. I, 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 I could read a piece of copy and then let go of it. Just let it go and go about my day, you know? And, um, I think that has a lot to do with, um, my brand of success that I, I, there's no desperation in my reads, you know, there's no, there isn't, I don't, I read it. I, I'm uh, confident in my ability, and right. I'm either right for the job or I'm not. Right. And we move on. Right. Knowing yeah. it's totally out of your hands, right? It's right. Completely. It's totally, yeah. You just don't know. They don't, yeah. and they don't know. They don't know whether they want you until they hear you. Right. right? I mean, yeah. it's just it's totally out of your yeah, hands. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And I, and we know there's jobs for everybody. Yes. If you're good enough. If, <laughs> and if you hang in. Right. You know, I think uh, I think you got to hang in and know too that. Um, when you're auditioning, I, I always think to myself, I'm auditioning for the next job. When I'm reading this copy, I'm really auditioning for the next. 
because huh. it takes it takes it takes quite a lot to be the person that's chosen right for the job but there are two three four people right behind the chosen you know <laughs> who are fabulous and actually who could totally do the job and yeah. if i wasn't available would do the job yeah and so if I'm the second in line, I was going to say, if it's the reverse yeah, situation, they yeah. may say, Oh, I remember you. And that was, you were great on that. We cast so-and-so, but I remember you for this part here, you know? So I think we're always auditioning for the next job. And we're, we're, we're always giving casting directors a, um, uh, a heads up about who we are and that we're here. We exist and we're coming, you know, mm -hmm. we're, we're in the game. Yeah. So, is there any other area of voiceover you'd like to examine, or uh, or you do you think you've done it all? There's probably well, something new coming along, and yeah, who knows? Mm. Who knows what might be invented? But I feel really lucky. I feel like I've done, um, I've done, I've done promo, and I've done commercial, and I've done live announcing, and um, and you and you continue to do I all do. those different things. Yeah, I do. I do, uh, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I do, you know, I haven't yet booked an animated series, um, but I, it's coming. I, I feel, I don't know how long, but I, uh, you know, I'm starting to get callbacks. And, Excellent. Yeah, so those are all um, important steps, you mm -hmm. know, so. Um, but I love it. I love being behind a microphone, and um, I'd love to do a singing role sometime in something animated. Did you do any, any training in, in, in singing? I do. I mean, I, I started as a singer. Ah. I mean, yeah, so that's... But I, and I haven't sung in a really long time, but yeah. Um, yeah. But, but that yeah. training can help in voiceover oh, as well, absolutely. just for breath control and those breath sorts control of things. Breath control was always comfortable in front of a microphone. That that was never foreign to me, you know. That's so, cool. Yeah. So that was when, when training, taking voice lessons. When they start talking about, well, your voice is out here. I'm like, no, I don't, it's not where it is. I didn't quite follow that. <laughs> So uh, what are you, you going to do? What, uh, I don't know. Find a different teacher. <laughs> I, yes. Uh, let's see here. Um, you're coaching now, too? I do. I do coach. Yes. And uh, how many students do you have? And, and how do you do it? You know what? I, I tend to uh, I coach privately. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just have a handful of students um, for varying periods of time. Um, and I generally... Uh, coach via Skype, mm -hmm. um, and I, I have worked with people who've never done voiceover. Mm -hmm. I have worked with people who work all the time in voiceover, and um, I work sometimes with very specific pieces of copy, and I work with people who just want to know if it's if voiceover is something they want to do, um, and I, you know, you can get a pretty good feel pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and I teach commercial, and I teach promo, mm -hmm. and every once in a while I will do a narration workshop uh, with Pat Fraley. I, I teach a little bit of narration with him. Um, I don't teach any um, animation or gaming yet. I still feel like I'm, I'm still learning so much myself. And while I certainly, you know, if somebody asked for a tip, I'd certainly right, be able to help them. But that's why you're here. But I feel like <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm really still a student of it myself. While mm -hmm. I, while I start to sink into those areas, but yeah. um, but commercial and promo are probably the that that's the focus. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Now you're also doing something that. George and I have been doing for the last six years. Yes. Uh, not on camera, although maybe now you can doing it on camera. Boy, it's quite, it's quite <laughs> technical here. I have to say, I'm quite impressed. It's just my <laughs> office, but you know. Uh, but your podcast. Yes. Tell us about it. I do a podcast called The Beehive: Women in Voiceover, and I interview women in voiceover. Um, <laughs> and right, catchy. But. <laughs> yeah. And um, and I really uh, I interview people that you you know th it's funny vo voiceover is an interesting thing in that we know each other right yeah. it's a small community group of people um, so even if you're really uh, well known in this in the circle uh, of voiceover actors we we we're not really stars you know we can go to the grocery store you know right. and and not be discovered and right. all of that there's no such stuff. thing as a voiceover a-lister 
Right. You know, we're except inside, right? right. Inside the the world of voiceover. Right. I think there are. Right. You know? Um so I ha I, I occasionally have on, you know, like Jennifer Hale was on uh last week mm -hmm. and she's huge in gaming. Um just huge. Um but most of the people I have on are longtime working women whose names you wouldn't know, but truly you would know their voices. If they're in the grocery store, they're on your television, they're voicing characters of your favorite cartoons. Right. Um, and so we get to talk about, uh, we talk a little bit about voiceover, but we mostly talk about life. All right. Yeah. So what, so. what are the challenges? And, and I hate to go there after a couple of weeks ago, but what are some of the challenges that women really face in the voiceover business? Because, you know, I've interviewed a lot of women in voiceover yeah. who are very successful, and but did you have to overcome stuff that other people, like men, would have to didn't have to deal with? What were some of your challenges, and what um, are you finding are some of the challenges of your guests? Well, I think I've never, as a female, I've never looked at... I, I feel like my career I, I, it has been, I've been very fortunate. Um, and I, there's sort of the larger picture of overcoming, which is that the vast majority of work is for men. And so that's kind of a constant thing that, that it's not a part of my daily life. It's not like I sit and think how much copy are all the men getting? And I've, you know, I've only got four pieces there. It's not, that's not how it is, but when you look at the larger picture and you and you listen to radio to television to to animated characters in video games the vast majority of the, of the work is is men um that said there's so much more work out there all these cable stations all these shows all the you know there's there's a lot of work and there are women working content right that's totally true so that that obstacle that sort of um, I just think it's it's just in the culture. I just think it's a part of it's a part of our world, um, and I have chosen to um, not see it as an obstacle. I just I go for the work that I that's you know um, that's there, um, and I look for the doors that are opened. You know, um, and I applaud those women who are trying to bang down other doors. I'm just the I'm the girl who's like trying to find the <laughs> my door to go right, through. Right. Um, but I think that we we face I think the typical challenges of you know uh, raising our children, sort of being primary caregivers. I know there are men who are primary care caregivers as well. I think by and large women still are. So um, so that's certainly an obstacle. I'm trying to balance that whole uh, work and home life, and uh, if and you've got kids and. Uh, who's taking them to school and what time is pickup and have soccer practice and blah, 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 you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Who's cooking dinner, who's doing the grocery shopping, who's right. doing the laundry, blah, blah, all that too. Um, otherwise the challenges and obstacles I think are just, um, those of the human condition and, and they're faced by men and women. And, um, and that's ultimately what we end up talking about because what that, I think that my most pivotal question in the podcast is always what is what obstacles have you overcome? And um, people are so forthright. I really I love them for this. I love that they share these kinds of things like, you know, um, breast cancer, postpartum depression, um, relationship issues, difficulty with children, um, problems with their parents, you know, um, how how their dreams were shaped by um by, you know, how their parental relationship was formed, you know, how right, all right. that stuff, all these human condition kinds of things. And, and the podcast always takes a very interesting turn there. I think it just yeah. becomes really, yeah. Um, yeah. Guys don't talk about that stuff. Right. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, relationships. Sometimes, yeah. right. I know. Sometimes well, we, we drink wine while, <laughs> while we're podcasting, and Ooh. then things really get interesting. I'm sure Sometimes we drink uh, as well. It happens. <laughs> yeah, do you? Is it happens. still cold there, Jack? <laughs> Spe speaking of Jack Daniel, we're monitoring our chat room. If you've got a question for, uh, for Kay Bess, put it in the chat room. I'm sure. Have we gotten any so far, Jack? Yes, yes we have. Outstanding. Well, right we're going to take a look at some of those questions and uh, put them in there. 
And we'll be talking a little bit more with Kay Bess uh, right after this message. So stay where you are. For you. Do you know what your audition to booking ratio is? As in, how many auditions does it take before you book a job? How about your pipeline? Do you know which jobs you've booked? Which ones you've sent to the client for approvals? How about which ones you've invoiced but haven't been paid yet? Do you know how much you booked this month compared to last month or last year at the same time? Yeah, these questions might make your head spin. You might say, I'm a voice actor, an artist. I don't have a head for business, and I don't want to spend a bunch of time trying to figure out how to keep track of auditions, bookings, who hasn't paid me yet, and when was the last time I booked with that guy anyway? That's why we built voiceoverview.com, a simple way to track, manage, and grow your voiceover business. Because after all, it is a business. Voice Overview was built by voice actors for voice actors. Check it out today and start tracking your voiceover business. VoiceOverview.com, your voiceover business made simple. <laughs> you know, voiceover essentials get professional recording studio sound at home or when traveling with our fourth generation Port -a Booth Pro, it's the affordable, space efficient, portable alternative to an expensive, human sized vocal booth. Here are some of the features of the Port -a Booth Pro the unique Sonic Stage auditorium design. Just seven pounds but a rugged 600 denier fabric construction, a heavy-duty travel bag with exterior storage pocket and padded shoulder strap, a professional recording studio, Orlex Studio Foam covers all the interior surfaces, two-way zippered bottom and rear slots for shotgun mics, cables, and boom arms, anti-sway strap and booth lifter for boom arm mounting, a pre-slit bottom foam provides for a solid base for a desktop mic stand. Articulated script clip LED light with two mounting pouches, four digital corner straps for rigidity, those help a lot. Assembles in just seconds with two zippers. Fleece audio hood for extra noisy environments and all of that stuff that you can get with a Porta Booth Pro. And as you can see, it's easy to carry around. As I like to say, if you're traveling with it, you can also double as your suitcase. Uh, but you can see here reporters are using it. Uh, there's Harlan Hogan actually talking into his actual Porta Booth Pro. So uh, the great thing about it is, is you get a, an affordable studio that is great on the road, can help you in marginal situations at home, and it's just $349 at voiceoveressentials.com. So if you go over to voiceoveressentials.com, you can get free two-day shipping by Amazon. You can get it. As, so if you know you're going on the road in a couple of days, you could order one now and have it for yourself when you go on the road. Go over to voiceoverascent.com. Best way to go over there, actually, is if you're on the vobs.tv page, just go to the bottom, just look all the way down there, and you will see uh, Harlan Hogan, and you'll see that picture of him talking into his porta booth. Click on that. That will take you right there to voiceoveressentials.com, where you can get everything you need for your voiceover home studio. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan, for being with us for six years. We love you, man. Do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Okay. <laughs> In a world of audio, two men knew what they were doing, or at least they have you convinced. They put the BS in VOBS.TV. shop our guest is k Bess, and we've got lots of questions from our vast audience off from the four corners of the world <laughs> they are out there watching it live and uh we love having you here but uh let's get to some of those questions all uh, right go for it george number one first one i saw came from gerard mcguire and his question is do game auditions only come from la agents in your experience uh well, since I am a, a Los Angeles talent with a Los Angeles agent, <laughs> that's certainly my sense. experience. Exactly, um, exactly. However, I think, 
I think there's, you know, agencies in San Francisco for sure get uh, get gaming copy. Yeah. Certainly in New York. Yeah. I want to say it's possible Chicago, but honestly, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I would have to say that it's largely New York, L.A., and mm-hmm. San Francisco. Yeah. yeah. That's what I think. Where the games are largely being exactly. produced. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever gotten on a plane to go do a job somewhere? I have. Oh, cool. Not a, not they, a video They didn't game. send a plane to you, did they? A private jet? <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't no. get a private <laughs> Darn. jet. Darn. But I did get a first-class ticket. That was cool. awesome. Woo. Although the bummer about it was that this, the flight was so short that there was no first class. So I just got to sit. <laughs> I just got to sit sort of in the front of the plane. But it's like, honorary. wait, what happened to my great seat? It was an honorary. First yeah. No, yeah. Do that's I get right. a drink? <laughs> don't even get a salad. Yeah, I mean, come fair. on now. Yeah. <laughs> Question yeah. from uh, Maxine. Oh yeah. Do you have any personal guidelines for what games you will or will not voice? Do you steer clear of anything with violence or explicit content? Um, isn't it interesting? Uh, so it, it it's a little bit difficult um, because we don't we don't get the entire script right yeah. uh, when we're auditioning, um, and so it's difficult to know what you're auditioning for and whether or not. I mean, I think. By and large, you can, I, I don't know, sometimes you get a general synopsis of what the action is going to be. Um, video games are, my experience is the vast majority of them are violent yeah. um, in some manner, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did pass on, a, on a, uh, an animation audition last week because it was so gratuitous. I mean, the, it, that it was like, ah, I, I'm not sure that I would want my name associated with it which is the first time that that's happened with wow. a, with a uh, with an animated series but it was like wow this is and i'm i'm like so not a prude or you know mm-hmm. so i was almost surprised but i i was like wow i don't think i can do that there so, are lines everybody has everybody, one. and and i think you don't know until you approach it until yeah. you see it and you go wow i'm not stepping over you know yeah. uh, and so i don't have any hard and fast rule except that if it doesn't sit well when I if it when doesn't I read feel it, right, if it doesn't feel right, and uh, I think in this that instance it was just gratuitous that it had no point. Um, didn't I mean? Sometimes. Well, here's something to, to, to belabor this. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever read for something, then got casted, got in the studio, and then you started look reading the lines and going, ah. Oh. Oh my god! No. Like really? That has not happened. That has today. not. Okay, no, good. So I'm they haven't fortunate. pulled one all. They haven't like pulled one over on no. you, where they no. sort of you know misrepresented the role you're you're auditioning. No, for. that has not happened to oh, me. Oh, good. Yeah. Good agents. I know. Yeah. Right. Very good fortunate. Agents. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. it's happened to me. I'll tell you, if, if you if your agents know you too, oh, that's really important. I think it's entirely possible that there are things that have come in that. Uh, that they just know me and say, they yeah, she's not, she's, not gonna, she's not going to, she's not going to read for right. that. So that's it's entirely possible. It's the importance of good representation. Exactly. Well, Jack Daniels been sitting over there very patiently, uh, and comes here every week to help us out. So I'm actually going to let him ask his own question. Great. So cool. Fire up his mic and, and the audience cam. All right. Hey. There he is right over there. Fantastic. We'll talk about residuals later. <laughs> so Kay, yes. you said that in promo, you tend to more or less rip and read. Okay, more or less. More or less. But do you have a stable of characters that you use within the promo framework, you know, to draw on for different types of reads, different types of promo reads? Um, I don't think of them as being a stable of characters. Okay. I think of, uh, I, do, I do think in acting terms. I think of who am I talking to, the, the urgency of the scene, what is it that, I'm, that I need to convey. Um, and, you know, they... Those, the types of reads are either they're authoritative, they're urgent. Uh, I often get, you know, the sexy promo reads, you know, th- those sorts of things. But I don't, I don't necessarily think of them as characters. They're me. They're all parts of me. Um, and it just depends upon what the, um, what the copy requires of, of which particular part of me it requires. So, does that make yeah, sense? It does. Yeah. You. Okay. Good. good All righty. Uh, Michael Blaha asks, I know the biggest jobs 
are union jobs. Are you a member of the union? I of am. Of course you're a member of the union. <laughs> but aren't more video game gigs still non-union than union these days? Oh, this is a really, uh, this is a really uh, touchy question. Topic. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a topical topic. <laughs> um, <laughs> go, yeah, go, go for it um, then. The union is, uh, we're actually on strike at the moment. Um, and so uh, there have always been non-union games. Uh, I think there will always be non-union games. Um, and right now we are, uh, the union is um, working to secure a better contract, which the focus of which really is um, safety on the set. A lot of voice actors are doing motion capture and performance capture, and that's physical work. It's And so we want a stunt coordinator on set. Um, we are are also asking for um, shorter sessions for uh, for vocal s- vocal stress work, mm-hmm. um, and then a different uh, a different pay structure, um, which is tied to um, which is tied to the sales of the of the game. Um, so there are there certainly are games right now that are what would have been union games that are being cast by non union actors, which is unfortunate. Um, uh I do think that eventually we will will come to some agreement somewhere who knows what it will be or how long it will take us to get there um but i i do i have confidence that um that the union will will keep its you know a strong foot in uh in gaming and that it's not all going to go non union yeah. i mean th- there's non union work in every in every aspect of of voiceover right. so the, Does I'll, that I'll, answer that question? It, it, it I, does. I, okay. Well, we can we can carry on with this sure. a little bit because you know we're we're concerned at uh, in our organization, World Voices, which is the industry association for freelance voice talent, uh-huh. and we have union and non-union uh-huh. members. Sure. Um, we don't want people, you know, it, it, we want people to at least be educated about who it is they're working for. Yes. And if they're you know if they see an audition or are offered a job within a video game that might be. It could be from one of the the struck signatories. Sure, yeah. Uh, perhaps just ask your agent. Sure, yes. Uh, or ask the actual client. You know what company is is this for? And right. they're going to go. Oh, it doesn't want to be a scab or something like right, that. Right, right, right. Yeah. But I think it's important that people stand up for what is important yes. because it's because it's such a growing part of the industry. Yeah. I would Absolutely. think that people really need to think about who it is they're working for. And I, and I think you have to. You know, if you really want to work in voiceover in a major city, you know, major cities will, all, the, will I think, always be predominantly union. And so if that if that's the playing field that you want to be on, I think you I think you have to think long term. I think you have to, you know, you have to have a long view about the. And if you think, oh, well, they're on strike. N- nobody's going to see me. You know, I, I can take this job. It's it's short term thinking. Right. Right. Um, and I just know as a as a you know a working class actor, um, I certainly am grateful to those people who uh, who won't step across the line and take work. And you know it it really does help us. It really does matter to um, uh, our health benefits and um, and pension. You know, I mean, I feel like I'm among the part of the last generation who will have um, a retirement. You know, and but you can if you if you work union, you know, if you keep things in the union. And so I've just I look at it as as, you know, wanting to be grateful to those who who support us, um, even if you're not in the union yet, you know, because if you want to be it's it's just really important to have a long view and think long term about it. So career length. Yes. Good career length. Absolutely. Who knew? I didn't know. Uh, 30 years ago that I would still be doing this. I mean, I just, I've just kept working and you look back and you go, wow, I, this, I've had a career. And you know what? I have retirement benefits that are going to be coming to me. And I mean, it's amazing, right? It's, it's really extraordinary. So. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 Well, we, we are a technical show and George, you had a question about, Yes. Technical stuff. I must ask you to tell us about <laughs> your home studio. Oh, okay. 
What do you got? What you got going on? What do I what, have? What's your chain? Yeah, what's the pressures. deep? What's it's the chain? What's your front end? Front end or back end processing? <laughs> you use an LDC or an SD? No. What, what, what do you like? To I do? have, uh, I have a Sennheiser 416, mm -hmm. um, and I actually have a bar another borrowed 416 from Townsend Coleman. Yay. God bless him. What a great guy. Um, <laughs> he let me borrow his mic so I could do my podcast on two on two 416s, which nice. is really awesome. So. I use an Apogee Duet mm -hmm. um, in a MacBook Pro. Um, I have a PreSonus headphone thingy. <laughs> One of those four. It's got like a really yeah, technical blue knobs on headphone it. thingy. Yeah. yeah, that allows you know my guests to have their own controls and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, what kind of space do you record in? We have this. This it's like half a garage uh, that was built out. Um, we rent this house in South mm -hmm. Pasadena, and it's a lovely space. My husband is a drummer, so on one half right. of the studio are his drums, and on my half is an old. It's it used to be our kitchen table, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's but it's it was elevated. It's like a bar, like a rectangular kind of bar thing, and um, so that's my table for my podcast, and it's where I re record my auditions and stuff too. Yeah. And Townsend came over. And he drilled holes in my table and attached <laughs> these fantastic, you know, swing arms. Um, so that is now permanently. It's no longer a, a <laughs> kitchen table. It will never be that again. Um, That's great. And I use Twisted Wave. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I was fascinated by your Adobe audition. What do you record the podcast on? I, I record it in Twisted Wave. So you have... Two microphones uh -huh. going to two channels. Yes. And then, but you're, you're recording a, a one single mono file. Correct. With both mics coming in. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a, yeah, I add a channel. Yes. You know? Yes. And then I can edit yeah. both, and I do edit. Yeah. <laughs> and then I convert it to mono. Oh, gotcha. That's the trick. After. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I add, I add another channel again, and I put my uh, intro wow. on that channel and my out. On that, and then I, I convert it to mono one more time, and then I run it through Ophon. Ophonic. That sounds like the uh, Bo Weaver school of how to produce a podcast using is, Twisted Wave. Is that really? I just I it's, made I made it up. You're basically shoehorning a function into the program that it was never designed. <laughs> never designed to do. To do. Yeah. I mean, it it works, but if you were to learn. There are better tools for that. Oh, that once you learn them, I'm you'll gonna go, have to bring you oh, over. So we, we, can, we can teach you. Can that. you help me? <laughs> yeah, we, we I know do how need to help. Do that. I'm so thrilled though. I'm once no, I run it through. You're, the fact through that you're doing it. Yeah. is like, oh, well, it sounds really good. Alphonic is pretty freaking cool. It's great for people who don't know what alph Alphonic is. It's um, an online service where you. I actually it, have the program. I have a software. Oh, you actually down. can I download it. the program. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be only online, and yeah. then they made an app. Yeah. But it's just like this automated smart mastering yes, software right. where you just put the so put your audio in, set a few parameters, yep. and then it pops out the yep, file. exactly. Process. And everything is, you know, if, if I'm speaking quietly and another person is speaking loudly at all, just it auto kind levels of, it all. It auto levels, and so it's great. Mm -hmm. It's really great. Yeah. yeah. Great, great for when you're doing a broadcast stuff, but for straight voiceover... Yeah, you don't want all that processing in there. No, front up, no, no. Right? I, I mean, just I just don't want to give you guys the wrong idea. No, this is podcasting. Come on, podcasting. Right? Sidebar. Podcasting, podcasting. Sidebar. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so when I record, I just record a mono file into Twisted Wave, and mm -hmm. you know, I, and I have no effects. I have nothing. I mean, yeah. good I, for you. I truly just <laughs> yeah. send it yeah, off. Yeah, if you have a great sounding clean studio, you can. That's everything. You don't have yeah. to do a whole lot to it. Yeah. yeah. So how do you keep your husband's drums from bleeding into your voice? <laughs> I lock him in the basement. Just, there you <laughs> go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're not. It's so funny. One time I did. He. He. Um, I was doing some editing. Right. I was sitting at my little table, and he came in and he needed to rehearse some stuff. And he's got Pat. You know, little. Uh, Digital drums? rubber things on oh, his yeah. drums. Oh yeah, pads. Yeah, <laughs> pads. Yeah. Um, and uh, he said, "Do you mind if I?" And I go, "No, no. It's it's okay. I think you know. I got my headphones on." So, oh, how did that work out? It's in, it's in 30, 30 seconds, and I'm like, uh, I'm out. I'll go in, the, go in the house, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Compared to regular drums, they're not that loud, but I'll tell you, when you, in the vacuum of, of studio, it's yeah, pretty loud. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we got time for one more question here from Devox, who always has a question. 
every single week because he's a thinking guy. <laughs> What's the most interesting insight you've discovered in the past year regarding voiceover performance or this business? Her eyes just rolled to the back of her head. <laughs> <laughs> he asked the hard ones. Um, wow. The, the, the biggest thing I would say, and this is coming from someone who's done this for 30 years, yeah. is that the reins of my career really are in my hands. That we often rely upon, or I did, I just will just speak for myself. Um, I, I had this mentality of my agent is responsible for my career. And, uh, and so if things aren't going well, uh oh, I better find a new agent or, you know, that kind of, that kind of mentality, which I think is a really common one uh, among actors. And, and I just, through the course of doing games and my desire to do more games and my desire to, um, my desire to have the games that I'm in seen, you know, I, and it truly is like something in me. This des it truly is a desire. Like I, um, it's up to me to promote it. It's up to me to do it. And I'm, I'm responsible. And I think that's probably the biggest, um, epiphany that I've had. And, I feel like I'm getting to that epiphany a little late, but you know, better late than never. Well, it yeah. was working for you, but the times yeah, change, and you've got to learn to to yeah. market yourself and, yeah. and find new venues and new avenues for for your career. And I think in in gaming, for sure, it, um, I mean the the millions and millions of people who play games uh, and who know your characters, uh, it, it, you. <laughs> It's funny, your character in a video game is a big deal if you decide to make it a big deal. You know, if I, had I known the, what kind of character Anna was in Rise of the Tomb Raider, I could really have promoted that much more and probably parlayed it into more work sooner, mm -hmm. right? Because I didn't, but I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't know and it was sort of like, well, if it's a, if it's a big character, then the game itself, the game uh, makers are going to promote it. No, no, no. They're promoting the game. Right. You know, and if I want to promote my skills as a voice actor um, and my, my participation in this game, that's up to me. You know, so, um, so yeah, the reins, the reins are in each of our hands. Good to know. Well, yeah. K-Best. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so having much. you on our show tonight. It was so fun. It went so fast. It does. <laughs> it just—it's amazing. It's like six o'clock, and boom, it's time to go. But yeah. we're not ready to go quite yet. But thank you for coming with us uh, on, with our, on our show tonight. And uh, George and I'll be right back to clean all this mess up right after this. <laughs> Hi, you VO friends. You say you ain't booked a VO gig in seven years? And your demo is so old that you can hear the clicks from the stock music records. And you hear so much tape hiss that you run to the sink to see if the faucet is running. And the engineer used so much echo on your voice that it sounds like it was recorded in the Grand Canyon. And the scripts seem a bit dated too, advertising the new and improved 1938 Plymouth Road King. <gasps> Is that what's been troubling you, Bunky? Well, lift your head up high and take a walk in the sun. Your demo can be killer, too. Just contact Uncle Roy at atlantproductions.com and book yourself a shiny new killer demo. Show your stick to and show the world. You'll never give up, never give up, never give up. That dream. You know, if you're looking for the very best, most comprehensive voiceover training, it's at VO2GoGo.com, where you're trained personally and individually by David H. Lawrence the 17th to create a successful and profitable voiceover practice. But if you go to VO2GoGo.com right now, you're going to be temporarily disappointed. Why? Because for the first time in 11 years, David's raised the monthly subscription fee for his VO2GoGo Pro classes and workouts. 
Since 2006, it was $200 a month. But today, Pro is $250 a month. And the Pro Plus monthly subscription, which adds three produced VO demos to your training package, went up from $400 to $450. The nerve! No warning! He just did it! I mean, that's still an amazing bargain for what you get in either Pro or Pro Plus, but ouch, right? But guess what? We... George and I have complained loudly on your behalf. We beat him into submission. I'm going to take it! Who, how dare you raise the rates and not warn people? Well, you know, he listened and folded like a cheap copy stand. So David agreed to, to you, VOBS viewers, for just $200 a month for Pro and $400 a month for Pro Plus. VO2GoGo.com, uh, or choose, uh, you, just all you have to do is go to the coupon code of VOBS, and it'll save you up to $600 over their regular prices. Of course, you can save that now if you go to Pro Complete, but that's only for really dedicated talent who want to unlock the entire 36 class course through all at once and then you'll get started all that much faster this offer is only good for a limited time if you've decided you want to up your game in voiceover go to vo2gogo.com to get the training you need create a successful satisfying and profitable voiceover practice visit vo2gogo.com forward slash vobs and it'll save you six hundred dollars thanks to david h lawrence for sponsoring our show and for cutting his prices just for us Okay. This is John Bailey, the Epic Voice, and you're watching VOBS.TV, Monday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9.30 Newfoundland. There's one guy in Newfoundland that watches the show. That would... <laughs> All, I know. All right, and we're back. We know what we forgot to do. We, we didn't... forgot to find out exactly how to find Kay's podcast. podcast. So, Kay? Yes. Take it away. Plug away. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Hi. <laughs> so you can find my podcast, uh, the Beehive Podcast, Women in Voiceover, on iTunes. Um, that's probably e the easiest place to find it. And it's Beehive, B, the letter B dash hive, just so you know. And then you can also find it at thebeehivepodcast.com. Fantastic. Like that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Subscribing. Please. All right. Please do. Another podcast for you to listen to. I have a lot in my, in my feed, but um, I'm discerning. That's I good. I, good. I, I listen to it for a while, and if it doesn't grab me, it floats down the list. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, next week on this very show, if you tune in at the same time, same bat channel, uh, July 24th, John Keeney and Randy Brown of Vizzy Demos will be here. And they've been actually working on a Vizzy demo for me. No way. And we're going to talk about the process of how they make it and why you want to consider doing a video demo for your uh, for your demos. They're going to be here on Zoom, right? Uh, John is actually flying in from San Francisco. <laughs> oh, my God. Which means i got to pick him up at LAX and I'm hopefully we'll be back be on time. Oh, He's well. flying in and I'm flying. Hang I'm going to miss it. Yeah, oh, sorry. Man. I'm well. going to be on the show, but I'll re be remote. Right. So. But um, it'll still great. be perfect. Yes. Yeah, so cool. he's coming in and we're going to talk about Sorry, that. Sorry, John. Yeah. Uh, July 31st, Sarah Jane Sherman, formerly at Disney, now head of casting at Free Range Animation. Sweet. Glad to see she landed on her feet. So, uh, nice. so nice of her to come back to the show after yes. a uh, yeah, fall. Well, yeah. We will talk fault. about it. Yep. Yep. Uh, on August 7th, Karen Saltis will be talking about her mobile studio, oh, which that's is awesome. Which is in a, in a, what is it, an Airstream or what? Did she build it into a small trailer? But, um, you know, I saw an interview with her um, from Source Elements uh -huh. from a year ago on their blog. And <laughs> I listened to the interview and I thought, we got to have her on. This is totally up my alley and your alley. Just Mo making things work and going out and doing something kind of crazy right like we do here every single monday night making this happen right you know yeah i mean yeah you'd look into a trailer how could you do this in here and that's what she did and exactly and we'll see what her process was about something you might be able to learn about doing in your own trailer if you happen to have one mm -hmm. uh which will you know if she did trailers she'd be doing trailers in a trailer <laughs> yes i'm yes. sure we could triple up on that one i know think hard enough. yeah who are our donors of the week donations mm -hmm. we need a little theme song for the donations don't we yeah we need a little something I'm, I'm still waiting for cliff to redo the, the guitar riff on our theme maybe <laughs> come on cliff yeah come on now aren't you guys tired of hearing that thing um <laughs> we got a nice one from pat probably because i stuck his face on our microphone yeah is that in the frame no, no just wait, wait, wait. lower that just a little bit 
Pat, Pat's face is on our microphone. Pat Sweeney, right there. He, now you can see it. Da -da. <laughs> Pat Sweeney, thank you for your donation, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, other donations <laughs> came in from... <laughs> see, and you get your picture on there. That's, that's what you get for donating to our show. There's only room for so many stickers. It's I not know. a NASCAR. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Who says? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we've got a subscriber from a subscription. He donates every month. That's Michael Martin. Thank you, Michael. Um, Eric Aragoni donates pretty much every single show. Thank you so much. Thanks, Eric. We really so appreciate really it. So really kind of you. Uh, more donations coming from Andrew Kaufman. He's also a subscriber. Thank you so much. Sarah Borges. I believe that's the right way to say her last name. Um, thank you, Sarah. And what else do we have coming in? We've got another one that came in from Do 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 Antland Productions. Thanks, you know Uncle Roy. Always a way to slip in one more mention. I'm just convinced he doesn't know how to cancel his PayPal subscription. That's why he keeps coming in. I'm not gonna tell him either. Okay, all right. That's our donations for for since our last episode. All righty. Uh, our intro tonight was by the amazing John Taylor, and it was. I swear we're gonna do a new intro soon. When well, you get back from Colorado, we're going to plan it out. We're going to create a whole new intro for the show. It's it's a lot of work and with everything else going on. We haven't been able to squeeze That's it in. That's really true. The bottom line is we're still doing our show without it. So we're okay. That's fine. We're I mean, surviving. But people are used to it. All right. <laughs> What's going on over at Edge for? What are you doing with Edge? I don't know. I'm looking at it here right now. The coolest thing is the fact that there's a button at the top of my website that says Get George. I think that is cool. Get George. Uh, <laughs> get George in orange. Um no, we've got we've we've reorganized the website and now there's a section on the site just called Pro Services. So if you go to edgestudiotechnology.com, every service that we provide is in one place under Pro Services. And you can scroll through there. All the personalized scheduled assistance stuff is on the left. And on the right side, if you look under popular services, I've got a huge range of different things that you can choose. And one of my favorites is microphone selection. So if you've got a whole lot of microphones, or maybe you're demoing a bunch from What's your, the best microphone for voiceover? What's the best? You want to know what's the best <laughs> microphone that you have for your voiceover. If you need someone to give, guide you through that, check out my microphone selection service um, that we recently added to the website. And uh, I'll review up to six different microphones and give you my, my ranking and let you know what it is that make the top mic the top mic. Very you know? cool. So hopefully that'll help you narrow it down and end up with the cheap. May the cheapest mic win. <laughs> the cheapest but the best yes exactly all right uh you know k best gave us great stuff tonight yeah stuff to think about if you want to find out if you missed the show you know how are you hearing me say this uh if you're watching the replay the show logs are there and jack de is out there every week writing down every word that is said on this show super cool and giving you uh a good access to where things are and tr helping to find out we Here's appreciate a power that power user thing if what? you're on Jack does a nice job. He does a, it's a summary of the notes. It's right. not every word, but if you really, really want to see every word on YouTube, it automatically transcribes the show no. and gives you uh, closed captioning. Wow. So when you're on YouTube, you can click that? the closed caption in the lower corner and it will overlay what's being said right onto the show. Yeah. So if that helps you understand what we're talking about, give it a shot. Absolutely. You know, and just like KBS has a podcast, so do we. We do a podcast version of this show every week, and you can find that on Stitcher Radio, Podbean, iTunes, iTunes, and wherever fine uh, podcasts are found. And if you are listening to the show, you, but you'd rather be here live one week, then we're on 6 o'clock Monday nights Pacific time. And VOBS.TV, where you can interact and talk in the chat room right. with the uh, yeah. And the if you're viewers. In, if you're in the greater Los Angeles area and you would like to be in our vast studio audience here in this massive auditorium we have, <laughs> um, <laughs> that Jack is filling up and Ari must so, like dog. Yes, you have to like Ari. You know, <laughs> Tinky Tinky doesn't come in here unless unless Marcy comes in here. But uh, but if you want to be on the show, all you have to do is write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV. And uh, we'll be happy to uh, accommodate you. Just we'll got to be here at 5.30. Pull you up a chair. Right, exactly. Uh, also, um, uh, what are some of the other things? That, oh, oh, of course, with... Um, Thanking the sponsors? Well, we're going to thank the sponsors. Okay. But uh, there, are, there are other things. If you have a technical question, you can also write to that address, the guys at VOBS.tv. Yes, we do love getting your questions very, very much so. Yes. Send them in. 
Okay. Uh, we do need to thank our sponsors because Absolutely. without them, how could we do it? Vizzy uh, Video Demos. Harlan Hogan and VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO2 GoGo and Rehearsal App and all the other stuff that David H. Lawrence yeah. does. Antland's Killer Demos. And our new sponsors, the VO Dojo and VoiceOver View for providing this uninterrupt, uninterrupted live stream right to you. That's and uh, so uh, that's that's really cool. Uh, we appreciate that. Also, thanks to Marcy uh, for uh, letting us be back here every week. In the garage. Uh, yes. Uh, our producer, Catherine Curran, for booking <laughs> fabulous guests like K-Bess. Uh, got, we got a couple of surprises coming up probably in August. Some great people are going to be on the show. Uh, Jack Daniel for doing our, our, our chat, chat room, room tonight. Mod. Appreciate that. And our amazing floor producer, Andrew Bushwitz, who did just yeoman service tonight. He did a fantastic job. He's really coming into his own. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and of course, Jack DeGolia for the show notes and Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. All right. You know, I forgot to tell everybody we've got a new animation from Jacob. Nice. Yes, it's Plancy's World 5. <laughs> By far the best one we've done and uh, a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that right after the show. So uh, that'll be right on right after we sign off here. So uh, that's going to do it for us tonight. Hey, Thank we you. know this is not an easy business. You got to work hard at it. You got to study. You got to make it happen. Keep doing that. Take the classes. Get good coaching. But just do what you got to do to make it happen and stick to it. And if you got a technical question, you know where to come. Uh, that's going to do it for us tonight. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Yes. Have a great week, everybody. Stay tuned for Plan C5. On in on the Canary Islands. Yeah. I, yeah, I grew up and I lived my They all ribbed for her pleasure. <laughs> Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Having dinner tonight? Hi, everyone. I'm Plancy, and I'm Flower, and you're an idiot. We're on our way to the beach. Walk faster! I need my sunlight! Oh no! A fork in the road! Which way should we go? Left! Should we take the left path? Yes! Or the right path? Left! What the hell is that thing? Get away! Get away! Shoot! You broke the pointer! How are we supposed to know where to go? Go left! I need our friends to help. I'm your friend, aren't I? Mm, yeah? Well... Go left! Mm, uh, are you blind? Left! <gasps> hey, look! It's Shifty the Vulture! Maybe he can help us! No! Hey, Shifty! Which way should we go? Right. Okay, thanks, Shifty. My pleasure. Great, we're gonna die and become vulture food. Doesn't look like the beach at all. You should have gone left, you moron. Well, let's keep going. We're going to the beach and we're gonna play with sand and God, we're gonna feed the seagulls this all day. Hey! What are we gonna do? Hey, it's the beach. We did take the right path. Oh, I do so love helping. Wait, wait. Th then what was the other path? Oh, bye. The beach. <laughs>